today we're looking at an advanced SQL interview question by Noom that will test your ability to apply concepts related to joins and aggregate functions. We'll go through a framework that helps you solve any coding interview question. But before we get started, if you are preparing for data science interviews or just want to be a better coder, check out our channel which is dedicated to helping you improve your data science skills. Our interview question for today is from Noom. Noom is a fitness and weight loss subscription based app for tracking food intake and exercise habits. Our question today is find the most profitable location. The question asks you to calculate the average sign up duration and average transaction amount for each location and then compare these two measures by taking the ratio of them for each location. You're given an expected output and are asked to sort them from highest ratio to lowest. Now in order to solve the problem, we use a three-step framework that helps us take a complicated problem and simplify it into a few steps. You can apply this framework to solve any coding problem. The three-step framework consists of 1. Exploring the dataset, 2. Writing the approach, and 3. Coding the solution. Before starting to code, understand the dataset. Make sure you understand the columns in each table, their data types, and what the data really represents. There are probably tricks and edge cases, so while exploring the dataset, engage the interviewer and ask clarifying questions, and explicitly state your assumptions about the data. Then start writing out your approach and outline the steps you would take to solve the problem. Don't code yet, just write out your approach as sentences and pseudocode and verify with the interviewer. This will engage the interviewer and create a dialogue and also helps you verify if your logic is sound. And lastly, you would start coding. Let's dive into step one of our three-step framework, which is to explore the dataset. We are given two tables, one for signups, and another for transactions. The signups table contains the column signup ID, which will assume to be the primary key for the table, signup start date, and signup stop date, which are both formatted as date time, plan ID, which is an integer representing a plan type, and location. Now, we can clarify what the signup start date and stop date actually mean. Is it the date when the customer registered on the platform or the date when they subscribe to a plan? For now, let's assume that the start and stop dates relate to a customer subscribing and canceling their plan. We have the second table called transactions table. It contains the columns transaction ID, which is the primary key for this table, a signup ID, which was also contained in the previous table, a transaction start date, and the amount relevant to the transaction. It's always helpful to imagine how these tables are created in the first place. When customers sign up, they are assigned a unique signup ID and an entry is created in our signups table, where we also log the date that they signed up and the plan that they subscribe to and their location. Then Noom provides their services to the customer, which the customer then pays for. A transaction occurs and this is logged in the transactions table where a transaction is assigned a unique ID and is recorded with reference to the signup ID for that customer as well as the date and the payment charge for that transaction. In the case of subscription businesses like Noom, the customer is typically charged on a regular basis, say monthly. Therefore, we expect to see repeat transactions translating into multiple entries per customer, that is per signup ID in the transactions table. In other words, there is a one-to-many relationship between the signups and the transaction table. You should verify this assumption with the interviewer. One of the benefits of practicing through Strata Scratch platform is that you have the option of verifying the hypothesis by running the relevant queries. For example, in this case, this piece of code will show you whether there really are multiple entries per signup ID. Let's run a quick code and let's find out. Here we can see that a signup ID can have multiple entries in the transactions table. Going back, if the customer decides to end their subscription, the signups table is updated to reflect this through the signup stop date column seen earlier. Let's move on to the second step in our three-step framework, which is to write out the approach. Recall that we've been given our target output, which is supposed to contain the location, average duration, average amount, and ratio. Let's write that down. 
Now let's break this down. Notice that the ratio here is calculated from two columns, average duration and average transaction, which are not immediately available to us. So before building this final table, we will have to calculate the average duration and the average transaction per location. So an intermediate table would look like this. It would have a location column, an average amount column, and an average duration column. Let's break down the calculation of average duration and average amount and note the relevant information required for each. Step 1 is to calculate average duration per location, where duration is the length of time between the customer's start and stop date. Duration also represents the customer's lifetime. We can find all the relevant columns in the signups table. Step 2 is to calculate average duration per location. Meanwhile, in calculating the average transaction per location, we will be using both the transactions and the signups table because the location information is not readily available in the transactions table. It is possible to connect these because of the common field signup ID. The result of these two steps will give us two tables, a table calculating the average duration per location and another table calculating the average transaction per location. Step 3 is to join the first two calculated tables. We need both these information in the same table to calculate the ratio. We expect the two tables to have the same locations, so let's use an inner join and relate this information with the location column. Step 4 is to calculate the ratio. Now that we have both the information in one table, calculate the profitability ratio, which is ratio equals average transaction amount divided by average duration. And lastly, we want the table ordered correctly so we can easily find the most profitable location. So step five is to sort the results from highest ratio to lowest. Now that you have all the steps to solve the problem, verify it with the interviewer. At this point or sometime during your explanation of the approach, you or the interviewer should discuss edge cases because that's really the whole point of these interviews. The edge case for this question is how does your query or analysis account for active customers, that is those who haven't ended their plan or subscription with Noom? How does this impact the interpretation of the results. A crucial insight to uncover is how the system records sign-up stop dates for active customers. There are a few possibilities. For one, the system leaves the sign-up stop dates as blank for active customers. In this case, our calculation for duration will be invalid. So to prevent this error, first filter for rows where the sign-up stop date is not null before the calculations. This will have the effect of restricting our analysis to customers with an established lifetime or duration reflecting historical performances only. Another possibility is that the system uses a proxy date for the stop date for active customers. For example, if the proxy date is the current date, then we have a running duration, wherein day by day, the sign up stop date is updated. If this is the case, then average duration will also change every day as the duration for our active customers increases. This is also problematic because a customer who signed up yesterday will have a duration of one day, which is a misrepresentation of the average lifetime or duration of the customer so it is recommended to restrict our analysis to current customers or historical performance instead to avoid this misrepresentation. Let's jump to the third part of our three-step framework, which is coding the solution. Following the steps earlier, let's now translate those steps into code. First, let's calculate the average duration, which is the difference between sign-up stop date and sign-up start date, and then we'll take the average of this per location. All right, so we have a query here. Let's run the query. So this results in a table with location and the mean duration for each location. So here's a query. Because we have both sign up start and stop dates already in date time types, we can directly subtract the two and get the difference in dates. Let's run it and find the output. So the result is a table with location and the mean duration for each location. Next, let's calculate the average transaction amount, which is even more straightforward. Our main data field, which is revenue, lies in the transactions table, but we need to join this with the signups table to get our location data. Then we can perform the aggregation as usual. This is the query to find the mean revenue from the transactions table upon joining it with the signups table. Let's run the code. 
and we get a table with location and the mean revenue for each location. Now that we have the two important metrics, we can finally build our target table from these two results. So we've written a query with all the four columns as required in the question, including the location, the mean duration, the mean revenue, and the ratio. Now the ratio has been casted as float because mean revenue and mean duration are both going to be integers. We've included the subqueries to find the mean duration and the mean revenue within this query. This gives a more organized overview and gives the interviewer an idea of how you organize your thoughts into a query. And finally, let's sort the results from the highest ratio to the lowest. We can do this by adding an order by statement at the end of the code. And the final solution looks something like this. Now let's run the code and get the output and then validate it. Let me pop it open for you. And this is the final target table. We've got the location, the mean duration for each of them, the mean revenue for each of them, and the ratio of the revenue and duration. The highest revenue per day is from Rio de Janeiro. From the results, we can observe that the average revenue of Mexico City is actually higher, but that is also more spread out over a longer duration as compared to Rio. Let's talk about the edge case that we had solved for. Well, if you didn't identify the edge case and talk it through with your interviewer, you might end up with a solution like this. Now using this approach will yield a different result because while the signups table contains a unique signup ID, the transactions table can have multiple entries for each signup ID. Therefore, when we perform a join on these tables as shown earlier, it will create duplicate rows leading to a different average. You can test this one out for yourself on the Stratascratch platform to see the difference in results. Thanks for staying with us in solving this problem. If you want to practice more, watch out for our next SQL interview question by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell icon to get notified. See you in the next video.